Azranok. Holy shit. You know what? I think I would like philosophy if it weren't for philosophers. They seem to be wallowing in intellectualism. Now, don't get me wrong. I did appreciate my uh, philosophy teacher and my philosophy and then ethics classes when I was attending the University of Michigan. But the constant rambling, the, the use, unnecessary use of big words to try to s sound intelligent irritates the hell out of me. Oh, okay, anyway. Um, you made a couple of points in your video. I see you've gotten like, what, eight video responses by now? And I, quite frankly, have only watched one of them that I didn't care for. Uh, before I get mired in anybody else's response, I'm going to make my own. Goodness. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, you said, I'm paraphrasing here, that if science, all of the science, all of science was reconciled from, you know, the physics. We've got uh, the quantum mechanics reconciled, reconciled with uh, relativity. Right now they don't get along. I suspect we're going to have to invent a new type of mathematics beyond calculus in order to get them to behave themselves. Not only that, but accurately figure out how many dimensions the universe has. I've heard 10, I've heard 11, I've heard 21. Uh, I don't think anybody's got a good handle on that right now. So, let's figure that out first. Okay. Seriously, before we we can't get a handle on material uh, on on determinism until physics is reconciled. So, any debate about it in the meantime, it's a waste of breath. Okay. If science was reconciled as a fluid and complete spectrum of various disciplines that accurately and completely describes the universe and reality. You said in that still it would be too limited to make any worthwhile predictions. Limited. We're talking accurately describing the physical universe in its entirety. That is not limited that is all-encompassing. Where's the limits? Well, the limits is, you know, as far as limits go, it's the limits of the universe itself. And arguing about what exists outside the universe is pointless because we're stuck in here. Okay. Limited. Just pulled it out of your ass. Do, uh, talking about love. Yes, yes. The, the physical nature of emotions. Do I still love my fiance when I'm thinking of something else. I hate to do this because philosophers do this a lot, but coming from a computer science background, I'm actually a little confident that my analogy holds water, as it were, holds electricity, as it were. I will use a computer metaphor, okay? A lot of philosophers do this without realizing that their their analogy falls apart when you talk about the the physical nature of computers. Anyway, um, let us let us say that the brain works like a computer. All right, let's say I love my fiance. That's the program. That's a specific program that's running at a, at a time. That's what I'm thinking about right now. That's what's current, that's what's being processed in my short-term memory, that's what's in the RAM, right? That's what I'm working on at the moment. That's, those are the things that are going through the main processor, okay? But let's say I'm not thinking about her right now. Put it in the back of my mind, so let's store that on the hard drive, okay? Long-term memory, not currently being accessed. It's there, but I'm not currently using it. And I'm doing something else. I'm doing something mundane, like I'm changing my oil. Okay, and your, and your thing was... Do I still love my fiance when I'm, you know, focused on something else? Of course I do. The program's there. The data is still there. It's not it's not being accessed. I'm not in that current emotional state at the moment. But given oh, I see her coming, I'm reminded of her, 
bam, that program gets accessed again and, you know, go through the same emotional state. The, the, all the inputs are there. The, the, the love for fiancé program is running. So yes, I love my fiancé even when I'm not thinking, her, thinking of her, just like um, anything is stored. Uh, it's, in, it's in memory. It's there. Fuck. Ah. Oh. Love juice. Come on. You can do better. Uh, cause and effect does not try to extend past the realm of physics. Fine. Unfortunately for you, physics is all-encompassing. It is the science. Other things like biology, chemistry, freaking sociology, subsets of physics. Subsets. It's really easy to see that, you know, chemistry and biology are subsets of physics. But the behavioral sciences are... Um, have to follow the natural laws as much as as any other field of science has to follow the natural laws. They're all subsets of physics. Everything. Uh, the notion of cause and effect is not itself cause. Are you talking about development of children, uh, infants specifically, and they're they're figuring out that the universe is. Uh, is a cause and effect universe, you know, something happens that causes something else to happen, right? This notion gets discovered, learned by a child from observing the natural world because a cause and effect, we live in a cause and effect universe. This is something that happens consistently. So if there is a brain learning about its environment, of course it's going, and it's doing so accurately, of course it's going to come to the conclusion that cause and effect works because it does in this universe in which we live. It is making an, a correct observation about reality. It is caused. It's caused by the fact that our universe is a cause and effect type of universe. At least on the Newtonian level you can prove that. Ugh. But things get messier when you go into quantum mechanics, but uh, it's a different story. Our brains don't work in quantum mechanics. Well, they do. Our brains don't simulate quantum mechanics. Let's, let's do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, question for you. Uh, how have you shown, because you said that you did, how have you shown that love cannot cannot be accurately and entirely described with a description of a particular physical state of a human brain. Granted, every human's brain is a little bit different. I would expect that love, that we would all recognize this love emotion, is going to be a little physically different from person to person. So be it. My computer and your computer run the same programs. My computer and your computer are different. doesn't matter. They're running the same software. They're doing the same things even though the internal physical processes are slightly different. They're close enough. Inputs equal outputs. It's functionally the same. Because, you know, I, I listened to your video, listened to the whole thing. I didn't get it. Uh, considering the physics of emotions and sensation is not a silly thing to think of. You said it was. The physics of emotions and sensations is not a silly thing. This is called neuroscience. It's a field of study that it's quite frankly in its infancy. A lot of progress has been made of late. I suggest you do some research on it. Silly thing. It is not a silly thing. That is an unjustified claim on your part. Philosophers. Holy crap irritated by philosophers very badly you can probably tell oh, gotta go to bed soon